New AmeriPower plant deal finally laid before Parliament with claims to save the taxpayer $56 million. We have details as government withdraws the previous deal that cost former managing minister Boache Jaco his job. This withdrawal has been necessitated by the revision made to the said agreement. Basically, there's a, at least a savings of, a, I think, about $56 million that now we are getting and, or, or, on the original. But the minority is not convinced about the expected savings. We'll hear from them and interrogate the details as presented before Parliament. This is Top Story with Evans Mensa. Top Story is always brought to you by Bond. It's also brought to you by Gas and Cement, the nation builder. Vodafone, the future is exciting, ready, and the nationwide health insurance. Now, government has tonight laid before parliament a new AmeriPower plant deal with claims it will save the taxpayer $56 million. The previous deal was so bad, it cost the former energy minister, Boate Jaco, his job. The MPP, while in opposition, had vehemently maintained that the deal to procure the power plant signed by the John Mahama administration was highly inflated and did not represent value for money. The original deal was to cost Ghana $510 million, but this government had been determined to renegotiate the contract. Sacked energy minister, Boate Jaco, tried and failed to renegotiate. Well, it appears the new energy minister, John Peter Mewu, had solved the Ameri jigsaw with claims the taxpayer will now make a $56 million savings. Listen to Peter Mew on the floor of Parliament today. Mr. Speaker, I seek your leave and the leave of this Honourable House to withdraw the innovation and amendment agreement to the build, own, operate and transfer boots agreement between the government of the Republic of Ghana and Africa and Middle East Resources Investment Group, Ameri Energy, which was presented to this house on Wednesday, 25th of July, 2018. Mr. Speaker, this withdrawal has been necessitated by the revision made to the said agreement. I humbly submit, Mr. Speaker. Well, let's get into the details of what was presented to Parliament today as we get to understand what this really is, this very controversial power plan deal. My colleague, uh, parliamentary correspondent Joseph Gakbo, uh, joins me with details. What do we know so far? So uh, this is something that was actually brought to Parliament in 2015, you would recall, costing 510 million US dollars. Uh, later, when the MPP took over, there were the complaints that it's been... Uh, overly inflated. You would recall that the uh, Dancia Soko MP Katie Hamon actually moved a motion in Parliament seeking that the House rescind the approval that it had given for this particular deal. That request for rescission is still pending. The House hasn't dealt with it yet. But eventually, earlier in the year, Energy Minister Boachia Jaco was in the House to lay what he described as a innovation agreement and that involved bringing in a new company, Metca, to run the plant and that the payments were going to be made to a Mary. He gave the indication that this new deal was saving the country something in the region of $400 million uh, plus and we, we saw the situation that unfolded when the presidency indicated that apparently with this deal he had misled uh, him 
to give the executive approval for it before it came to the House. And you'd recall the minority really raised issues with this new deal and insisted that it was no better than the deal that the NEC administration had actually signed. And when the energy minister was relieved of his job, government gave the indication that it will do the withdrawal of that particular document that the energy minister, Boatia Jacob, brought to the House. So that's what Peter Mew did on the floor of parliament earlier today. Withdrew the old one and laid... Um, a new agreement which he described as a renegotiated deal with enhanced terms. I spoke to him and asked him the difference that this would make uh, as far as the American deal is concerned. Okay. How different is it from the first one? One is debated, the outcome will come out, okay? Is it better than the first one that was brought, just to get a sense? Is it a better agreement than the first one? I think there's an improvement. Okay, improvement in what exactly? You know. The terms will be laid out when it's here. Okay. So what can Ghanaians expect generally from, from, from this? I think this is a better agreement, an improvement on the uh, what the previous government, the NDC, had offered this country. You know. Yeah. Is it equally an improvement on what the former energy minister had brought? It's a better agreement upon what originally had been signed by the previous administration. But is it better than what was brought by your own administration? <laughs> So that is the energy minister. It's been very hesitant yes. to give the details. Yes. However, you got some some bit of insight from another minister. Yes, uh, Dr. Anthony Akutose, who is the MP for Tafu Pankrono and a member of the Finance Committee, uh, he indicated that he has seen the agreement. It's a better deal than both what the former energy minister, Boachia Jaco, brought and even what the NDC negotiated. And he further gave the indication it could save the country something in the region of uh, 56 million US dollars. Uh, the government has been able to extract some concessions for our Mary, deferring payments of the debt we owe them for a period of time. And uh, basically, there's a, at least a savings of, a, I think, about $56 million that now we are getting and, or, or on the original. On, on, on in the original? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, that was so I'm comparing, yes, I'm comparing to the original. What if in comparison with the renegotiated one that was brought a oh, few months back? In clearly, it? if it's better than the original, then it's better than the renegotiated one. There were some issues with the renegotiated one that the government said it couldn't accept. So you find that the the, the payment is still held the same, but they've given some concessions that I think the total savings is approximately about 56 million, and the variable cost I think has been lowered. So and I think government is in better shape as long as we meet our payment obligations. And I think the first payment on the debt reshuffling has been made. So we are on track. What of the bit about um, when the whole equipment will become the property of Ghana? When the, the contract ends. When the contract ends. And then we'll have a year to finish up paying the debt and it'll be handed over. They'll hand it over, but they won't give the papers. We'll be using it. But they've given us one extra year to extend the payments. When we do that, then completely. But we'll, we'll have control at the end of the original period. Okay. Uh, but is there any comparison on the savings on this vis-a-vis -vis, yeah. no. vis -vis the contracts that became controversial and with the minister eventually we No, I'm, I'm, I mean, they, they are not comparable because the terms are different. Uh, the, the government doesn't have to defer for 15 years and so forth. Uh, so, I mean, uh, the terms are completely different. So, so, so then in some working Ghanaians expect of this new deal? We end up saving about 56 million, and we've kept most of the original deal, uh, except for them allowing us to defer what we owe them to, for another year. I, I think it's better. Okay, so that's uh, uh, the Antonio Kutose, who is the uh, Minister for Evaluation, there, giving us some sense of what this new deal is. But we've secured the documents uh, as far as this latest deal is concerned and i will not go through it uh, with you because this is really about the taxpayers money a lot has been made about a merit deal um ministers have lost your jobs there have been renegotiations we formed committees that traveled to uh dubai and other places just to investigate this and so a lot of time and money in the taxpayers resources have been put into this already and so if government says that they have an, a renegotiated deal it's good to pay attention to what they're claiming uh, to be part of this deal that will save you money. $56 million, uh, we are told, uh, you can't expect to make from this. Let's go to the deal, uh, Joseph. And there, there are some very interesting details we are beginning to learn. For example, we know, let's start from the top, we know that government owes Ameri huge sums of money, which has been outstanding for months, some say even for years. 
there is an agreement as far as that is concerned. And, and, and if you read page four, page three, rather, of what had gone to Parliament, it says, and this is what the government agrees to do with America. This is a, it's a, it's a joint agreement and signed, and Parliament will have to look at it and approve. It says, one, government of Ghana undertakes to clear America's complete backlog of payments starting from February 2017 until July 2018, latest by 1st March 2019 next year, total outstanding payment to be made to Ameri by government of Ghana is approximately $90 million. So we're getting to know now the specifics about how much government owes Ameri. Actual amount to be calculated and any accumulated interest shall be waived by Ameri. And we'll go into the details, some of the places that government is hoping to make some savings, including Ameri agreeing not to charge any interest on the outstanding amounts that government owes them. It goes on to state that this outstanding payment shall be made by government of Ghana as per the following schedule. And they have a schedule. So, for example, 1st November 2018, which is like a few weeks back, government should have paid $10 million to Ameri. Now, there are payments in the future. The first one is 1st January 2019. 1st January 2019, government will have to pay Ameri $30 million. 1st February 2019, government will have to pay Ameri again $25 million. And then 1st March, government will pay Ameri again $25 million uh, per amount, equivalent to our standing backlog balance. And so government is hoping that by 1st of March, they would have cleared the backlog of 90 million. Uh, million dollars that they owe Ameri. But there, there's more on this as far as this contract is concerned. Again, government and Ameri have agreed that the payment mechanism under this particular agreement, effective uh, August 2018, will include government paying Ameri about $6.375 million every month. But then, the you know, for, for the remainder of the five-year uh, boot agreement, they say. And then they went on to make the point that for the avoidance of doubt, they will pay Ameri a monthly amount of the $6.375 million from August 2018 until the term of the agreement expires. This is important. Remember that Boate Jaco had tried, in fact, had renegotiated this and extended the deal over a 15-year period, which became very controversial. Eventually, he's lost his job for it. But what government is doing now is saying, yeah, we agree that we cannot terminate the contract, which is what uh, Amiru's predecessor tried to do. We will not terminate. We will not, I mean, renegotiate and extend it by that much. We will pay you what you do, which is now we know $6.3 million over the remainder of the term, which will expire, I think, over two, two years uh, from now. Uh, uh, every month, six point three million, and the remaining amount, the expenses there will be some remaining amount of fifty six point seven million dollars. Uh, um, it says shall be paid by government of Ghana to Ameri in twelve equal installments of four point seven three million United States dollars per month after completion of the original five year boot term. So even when they pay the six point three million every month. There will still be an outstanding at the end of the of the contract of fifty six point seven five million. Government commits to pay that after that. Now, but there is something they 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 also believe they'll be saving. One, they also agree that between the parties that Ameri shall not charge any interest on this payment of fifty six million. Ameri won't charge any interest. So that's where government begins to calculate the savings. So Ameri is not going to charge any interest on it throughout the term of this twelve months period, right? Also, it is further agreed that the payments of these invoices shall be made by government to Ameri in accordance with the same timelines followed under Section uh, 11 of monthly invoice. Mm. Now, but there's some further savings, Th some there discounts. There is, there is. And uh, from the documents, Ameri has agreed that if the government of Ghana pays the aforementioned installations um, over the five-year period on time, they'll give an additional 5% discount per month on each invoice which is being paid on time as an incentive to the government of Ghana okay. to pay these amounts so on in time. Other, in other words, on the first of every month, if government pays their 6.3 million you on get a time, 5 you get 5% discount. of that. But there's more. There's more. Um, again, they are agreeing that there will be a further discount of um, 7 million United States dollars 
over the totaling amount of 63.75 million as reflected in the earlier calculation that had been done. I that see. as well, uh, 7 million of 63.75 million is another discount that they're giving government. It, it goes without saying, and it's written here though, that government agrees to to a timely payment of the invoices submitted to it. Timely. Because once you pay on time, you get 5% discount. Also, government shall provide a timely confirmation of letter of credit in accordance with terms. Government shall immediately facilitate the outstanding tax exemptions by the Parliament of Ghana. And so this is important. A Mary is still getting tax exemption. So that's where government gives up something as well. Okay, away so, from everything else. So government is getting 5% a discount if he pays on time is getting seven million off the total amount is also not going to it's not going to be charged interest by mary but they give a mary some discount some uh, they give a mary uh, some exemptions and we need to quantify that I and mean, i guess that will sort of tell us what whether we are gaining or we're losing in te- the, the depending on the on the value of the exemptions that we give but the other interesting bit is that Ameri would be handing over the power plant to government of Ghana after the five-year term, but then they would only transfer the document says the uh, title of ownership of the asset to the government of Ghana after the receipt of full settlement payments towards Ameri as per the terms of the contract. You recall that again, the issue of the duration that Ameri will hold on to this became controversial. Mm-hmm. It was extended to more than 10 years, uh, which was the variation per the contract Diona uh, Jaku signed with regards to the NDC. One was actually five years, was extended to more than 10 years. It's been brought back to the five-year duration after which Ameri will hand over the plant okay. back to the government of Ghana. But they are clearly stating in this that all the terms and all the outstanding amounts need to be paid before the title on the plans would be handed over to yeah. the government. Of so, Canada. so a few things that the, ha, so the key question: How is this latest contract different from what Bwati Jaku tried to do for which reason he got sacked? One, it's not 15 years; they've brought it back to five years. Two, they are not going to kick Ameri out. The original that agreement they had planned to kick Ameri out and give the whole deal to some other company to to sort of run. Correct? Metka, it's called Metka. Uh, yes, and and now uh, it's still Ameri yeah. running the show yeah. over the duration of so, the five years. So again, this is different from the Boache Jaku deal that got him sacked, in the respect that the government is keeping Ameri so as the principal, uh, I guess, vehicle for the delivery of power using that plant. You know kicking them out and bringing some other company in. Remember that Ameri had fought that and had issued a statement to say that they had no clue, they had not been consulted by the former minister and they were ready to fight this in court if the Boati Jaco had gone ahead with what he had intended to do. Eventually, we know he lost his job for it. No, a, a bit more on the concession that Ameri makes, and this is again captured in the memorandum from the Minister of Energy and the Minister of Finance was a joint memo from them to Parliament. Uh, they make the point that Ameri is waiving all interest on the payment of the outstanding debt of $90 million. Mm-hmm. Ameri is again waiving what they call a variable cost of $16.6 million annually, which is equivalent to $41.5 million on you know for the remaining two and a half years under the original agreement that the NDC signed, they again say that the payment for the cost of the asset for the remaining two years of the boot agreement, which amounts to 255 uh, million US dollars, would be made in the order in terms of the breakdown that you outlined earlier over the five years or so that the payment. Joseph, thank you very much. Let's bring in the uh, ranking member on the Mines and Energy Committee, minority uh, member on who's a spokesperson on energy for the minority, uh, Adam Mutawakilu. Mutawakilu, thank you very much for your time. Uh, here on Top Story. We lost him briefly, yeah, but we'll bring him on as we begin to interrogate this. And so, um, fundamentally, if you're just joining us, the government has just uh, submitted to Parliament a new deal uh, on the Ameripower plant, uh, which is substantially different from what uh, this own this government's former minister, Bwati Jaco, had attempted to do in, in many ways. We've explained uh, for you a short while ago. But let's bring in the chair, the ranking member, rather, on the Mines and Energy Committee, Adam Mutawakilu. Mr. Mutawakilu, thank you for your time here on Top Story. Yeah, thank you very much, Ivan. This sounds like a sweet deal, is it not? I mean, all the savings, no interest, seven million you get back, etc. On on what government has now managed to renegotiate. What what's your take on this? Is do you agree that as, as government is saying, it's going to save us fifty six million? This is what I'm hearing. The web the document before me, I'll be able to analyze it because we have experience an issue of that where over $400 million was said to have been saved, but it turned out to be a fiasco. 
But uh, in any case, we believe that and on uh, last year, uh, August 2017, when the motion was referred to the committee, we made it clear that the best way to go is for government to engage directly with Ameri. The government then disputed us and said they will not and they will never engage Ameri. And that resulted in an innovation agreement that got the former minister fired. Then they realized that there was the need to go back to America, pay the agreement that uh, Parliament had approved unanimously. All of us approved that agreement. So there are review clauses you could go in. As a new government, you have the goodwill. Businesses will want to continue doing business with you. And as such, they may by want to give some concessions to ensure that they continue to have business with the government. They disagree, but now Tango at least they have finally come back to what we said about one year and three months ago. And, and and as you mentioned the word concessions, and we've been reading from the new deal that has just gone before Parliament, there, there are a lot of them that Mary is making uh, tonight. And there's 5% discount uh, if we pay on time. There's uh, also an additional $7 million uh, that we'll get on the outstanding amount of $56, $53 million. Uh, I, I mean, among a host of other concessions that Mary is making tonight, do you endorse them? Do you endorse this deal? Hopefully, Monday when I have uh, the document before me and scrutinize it, and it is okay. Why not? It's for the benefit of Ghana. Two, I'll look at it vis-a-vis -vis what they had promised that it shouldn't cost more than three hundred and fifty million dollars. Why come it is now less than a hundred million dollars? That is our issue. But once the document is not before me to scrutinize, I cannot agree with you when I haven't uh, had the opportunity to scrutinize the document. One other thing that we also have seen in the, in the agreement is that government is still going to give Ameri some uh, uh, waivers when it comes to, uh, well, uh, the right expression there is tax exemptions. And that government commits as part of the deal to immediately facilitate the outstanding tax exemptions by the Parliament of Ghana. Are you aware of this in the previous deal that you signed? Was this part of the original deal? Normally, tax exemption comes from finance. So what we approved was technically the tariff regimes. So if that tax regime, then finance will now prepare that document and bring it for approval. And very finally, I understand that the Wache Jaku deal that came to Parliament eventually uh, had issues, it got fired for it, came without a, the AG's advice. I understand that this particular one came with the AG's advice. Do you, can, you, can you confirm that? Yeah, that is what I said when I received. If it has AG's advice, that is what we had requested when the innovation agreement came. And it has cabinet approval, that is what we had uh, requested when the document came. This one, value for money will not be necessary because there had been earlier one, and this is a renegotiated. It's a continuation. So if they had provided all those ones, that is in the right direction and what we had requested earlier. Mm. And uh, you, you, you also make the point earlier about the fact that you're happy that now government has come back to the point of keeping a Mary. A Mary is not going anywhere, um, as they had earlier attempted to do. Uh, I'm grateful that you joined us. Let's uh, let's let's interrogate this a bit more because we have a copy of the of the uh, Attorney General's advice that accompanied this deal to Parliament that was absent in a previous one, Joseph. And it became very controversial. The minority MPs were insisting that unless that advice from the AG accompanied the document, they can go ahead and approve it. But uh, we, we gather that uh, with the latest documents that have come to Parliament. Uh, dated the, 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 there is actually the Attorney General's advice from Madame Gloria Kufo dated the 15th of October 2018. And um, it's an advice that's just about six pages. It makes suggestions on amendment to some of the clauses in the original document. Just to point out one of them, um, it makes the point that there should be a, a, a specific statement in the agreement that a Mary would be responsible for the operation and maintenance of the plant right from the starting date at, until after uh, 60 months of full operation. And so uh, the AG advised that they should include that so that then uh, there will be the avoidance of doubt on that. The AG again advised that 
there should be the inclusion of a particular clause that the government of Ghana will provide a timely confirmation letter of credit in accordance with the terms of the boot agreement. Again, the AG advised that that should be there. And then uh, one of the interesting bits in terms of the advice that came from the Attorney General was that um, in the latter bit of the contract itself, when eventually Ameri is handing over the plan to the government of Ghana, an independent engineer needs to come in and do the certification and come to the conclusion that, you know, the plant is in good shape and that all the uh, equipment are in place before it's handed over. Now, the AG is advising that the, 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 with Section 26 of the agreement, it says uh, Section 26 provides that the government of Ghana shall bear payable fees to the independent engineer appointed by the parties to conduct a conditioned survey of the Ameri equipment to ascertain whether or not the equipment has been maintained in accordance with the original equipment manufacturer standard. Now, the AG is advising that earlier, government was going to bear the cost of that, although mm. both uh, parties are going to appoint that independent um, engineer. But the AG is advising that since both parties will be responsible for the appointment of that independent engineer, the parties, as in government and Ameri, should share the payment of the fees for that independent engineer equally. And that government shouldn't uh, solely take on the responsibility for the payment of that particular engineer. That's one of the key points. And then she rounds up by making the point uh, that, mm. well, if government or the, uh, particularly the energy minister needs any cl further clarification, she's available. Uh, you made that, that point. And, was and, and, and it appears from what I'm just reading from the actual agreement that's now before parliament that they 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 are they incorporated that, that advice into this agreement that before parliament because one of the things that i've seen in on page eight says that uh 90 days prior to the ex expiry of the 60 months uh, of the full commercial operation date and before the ameri energy equipment is handed over to the government of ghana for the operation and maintenance of Ameri Energy Equipment, the party shall jointly appoint an independent engineer to conduct a, a condition survey of the Ameri Energy Equipment that has been maintained in accordance with the original equipment manufacturer. However, and as another key point, that Ameri Energy shall, at its own cost, charge and expense, take all necessary steps to put the same to good working condition on or before the expiry of the 60 months after the full commercial operation date. In other words, Ameri will bear the cost of, if, if of course, you run it for five years. Before you hand over to government, you have to bear the cost to ensure that it's, it's maintained, it's in good condition before we take it from you. And it's been it's been made part of this new agreement as well. But there are there's, there's also other clauses that says, for example, if Ameri fails to restore the Ameri energy equipment to a good working condition within such period or replace such missing items, Ameri Energy shall pay to the government of Ghana such costs as to put the Ameri Energy equipment to good working conditions. So either you do it or you pay us to do it. Um, so, so those are details from this new deal uh, that has gone to Parliament. And so it's been referred to the Joint Committee on Mines and Energy as well as Finance. They are expected to bring back a report to the floor and then a decision will be taken on whether the House generally is approving this deal or otherwise. What we are not sure of is whether all this could be done for the deal to be approved before, before the Parliament House goes on research. Goes and from what we hear, years. even from the ranking member, they don't have this yet. Or if they have it, they are not yet to study it. And so we'll see how this pounds on the coming date. This is Top Story. But I thought you said your place was ransacked by thieves a short while ago. Mm. So how did you manage to replace all your